finding marten tracks in the snow in the high country and setting a trap, catching that animal and getting it out of the woods is really the exciting part about fur trapping. Uh, and in Montana, I get a lot of questions about that. But then the real work begins. And so I wanted to do a demonstration on how to get marten ready for sale after you get them home. Uh, being in the mountains sure is a fun part, but uh, this is really where you can lose money or make a lot of money. So I want to make a video. Uh, here it is. I've got a couple of Martin here that I caught in a high country in 120 bears a couple of days ago. They were frozen solid and I had to warm them up uh, in my fur shed uh, with the crackling wood stove, which you probably can hear. The first thing I do is I get a knife and I cut from the uh, ankle to the anal vent on both legs. And it's really important that you try not to get uh, a whole lot of meat and flesh uh, left over on the animal, uh, on the hide, as you're skinning it out. I like to make uh, an incision from both sides uh, with a good sharp knife. And basically, you're creating a tube. This is called tube skinning. Uh, it is the method that uh, fur buyers prefer trappers to use. And so to start uh, getting the fur ready for sale, make an incision uh, like that. I've now opened the animal. I'm going to cut up the tailbone. If you feel uh, along the back of the tail, inside of this tail is a bone, which I will show uh, very soon. I just skin up the back of that tail until I get to a point where I know that I can pull that tailbone out. One thing that I do keep ready at all times is sawdust and a little bit of borax. Uh, and the reason is I like to have it uh, just to provide grip. A lot of the skinning that is done is done without a knife, uh, particularly on these smaller animals where the uh, use of a knife will actually uh, can cause issues. So now that I have the tailbone started, I have cut behind it, behind the tailbone, and actually get my finger through there. The bone is now in the tail, and I'm just cutting up the back side of this tail so that I can expose that bone. And the reason is this bone will be removed and it's better to, uh, I think, remove the bone uh, in the way that I'm about to show you than uh, trying to do it really any other way. I'm just uh, cutting up the center and now peeling the bone, the tailbone, off of the fur. Now when I get to a point where I can slip this out, I grab the tailbone, I pinch it, I grab the fur, and I'm pulling the tailbone. What I want to happen, with a little bit of grip from sawdust, and it's fine to get sawdust in the fur, won't hurt a thing, provides grip. And I slowly peel this back. Until the bone is removed and the tail is now free from the bone. This allows me now to peel the skin back. And a couple of initial cuts with the knife, uh, being very careful not to cut through the hide, will enable me to get this skin off, the, uh, off of the carcass uh, without any holes. So the initial cuts I made to get this started, I will now cut all the way around the feet the hind feet of this marten. If you can see, I'm basically just going to leave the paws of this animal on and begin the pulling process where I pull the skin away from the animal. If anybody watching this video has uh, spent time uh, skinning deer uh, from a gambrel, uh, it's a very similar process. The whole point is to take your time and to make sure that uh, you don't 
uh, punch a hole in the animal and that will depreciate the value. I'm cutting around the feet, leaving the paws on the marten. It's a pretty simple process and I know that new fur handlers often take a long time to do this and that's fine. You want to take good care of your fur. If you're going to take an animal, uh, you should do everything you can to make sure that you're preparing it properly. Getting the most out of that animal. Now that I have that hide gone away from the two hind feet, I'm simply going to pull this down and work it off the body in a very systematic way a couple of cuts to get the uh, tough spots behind the hips will be necessary but then if you grab a little bit of sawdust to keep that stuff dry and to keep it uh, clean and give you some grip you can now just simply pull the hide off of this animal i will take the knife that i used and and cut uh, from the elbow to the front paw of the animal and then cut around the paws just like I did on the hind feet because when I get to that point I'm going to cut around those paws and pull this right off of the Martin pelt it's really as simple as that. I peeled it down. I'll do the same thing on the other side. When you bring this to the fur sale, or when you ship it, the fur buyers like to see a nice, clean, dry, well handled fur, and you'll get a lot more money out of it. Now you see, as I'm pulling down off this pelt, and I get to the front shoulders, you just poke your hand through there and pull that apart. Because of the incision I made earlier, it just pulls right off. It's a very simple process, and you can see that the hide is already basically clean. Now I'm going to pull this down just like a tube. It's called tube skinning. When I get to the ear bases, I cut through the ear bases. I cut through this ear base. This allows me to peel this down to the eye. And if you look, you can see the ear bases here. And we are now just at the beginning of the eye. We'll do a close up. When you clean this out, you can see the eye right there. That's where the eye socket is. And you want to cut that so that it's clean and tight against the body, or tight against the skull. So that you have it like that. And I'll do the other side in a similar way. Should look like that when you're skinning it. You're peeling this slowly away from the skull. And as you work your way down to the chin of the skull, you'll begin to see the teeth. And you simply pull this right off all the way to the nose. When you get to the nose, you must keep the cartilage on the nose there. You want it to look neat and clean when it's on the stretcher, which we're going to get to very soon. It does not take a lot of expert tools to put up Martin, uh, but one thing that you do need is a good sharp knife. This in the view. When you get to the nose, you can see how that looks. 
and you've got the cut just like that and leaving the cartilage on the martin falls away and you have the hide you can see the way that this looks now i take a stretcher that's appropriately sized i'm putting a little bit of sawdust on the board just for a little bit of friction i just take a big spoon and clean away the fleshy part there's a little bit of meat and a little bit of fat left on the hide and you want to get it clean but you don't want to get it so clean that there's absolutely nothing left and the reason is that fur buyers like to see a little bit of thickness to the hide because it makes it better for the tanneries they can actually get that hide as thin as they want to when they get it to the tannery. So I just take a big spoon, I'm just scraping off the big chunks of flesh, any of the major chunks, using sawdust for a little extra grip. You can see some of the skin that's on there. I'll actually touch that up with a knife. Just getting it relatively clean. When you get down to the ends of the hide, you just scrape it right off onto the board. And you can see this hide is getting nice and clean, but not so clean that there's absolutely nothing left on it. Up around the neck and the legs, you want to take a little extra care to get any fat or meat away from those areas always keeping the flushing knife or in this case a spoon flat on the board and this is the easiest method uh, that i have found just using the, the board that i'm going to put the martin on to flush it works well for me there are different flushing knives and fleshing boards that can be designed or purchased. Uh, I guess I just, over the course of a lot of years of trapping, don't see the point in having a bunch of fancy gadgets when a spoon and a board will bring top dollar on Martin. Once the majority of the fat and flesh is off this Martin and it looks really good and clean, like this one does, I will then take it and I'll brush out the fur a little bit. I just like to have a good clean fur. Getting a little bit of sawdust in there will not hurt it. If there's any pine pitch, that's a good time to get it out of there. I take the ears and if you look at these ears, uh, you'll see that on the back side is a closed ear. I can take that and just using a sharp knife cut around that cartilage. And it's really just going to take practice if you're new at this, but you can follow the cartilage line. And now that I have that started, I can slowly open up that ear and the reason for this <clears throat> when fur buyers are looking at your fur or if you're using your fur for your own use and you bring it to a tannery or you do a home tan you want to have the ears clean and the only way to clean those and make sure you get in there uh, to get all the bacteria out or prevent bacteria from getting in there is to clean them out like this. And so it's not super critical uh, to, uh, to do this. You can just clip the ears off. Uh, I prefer to do this. It makes the Martin look a little fuller on the board when the ears are on there. 
and if you kind of poke a hole or rip the ear a little bit, not a huge deal as long as you get the cartilage peeled away and underneath that uh, ear you have it all opened up. What I like to do is add a little bit of borax and I'll just take some and rub it inside of these ears to keep them dry and it prevents bacteria. When the fur buyer is checking these out a lot of times they'll pick them up and they'll sniff the ears and they can tell if a fur handler you and me did a good job of making sure that uh, all of the areas that could hold moisture uh, were addressed and so they love to see a clean ear that's opened and has some borax in it it just gives them confidence that the product they're buying which is your fur is of top quality and this can add money to your fur check if they see that you've taken the time to open up the ears um, or clip the ears off. So once this is done and you have the ears all cleaned out, keeping borax in there, now that makes the fur buyer happy, keeps your fur looking good, prevents bacteria from growing, it's a win-win-win. We're going to put a Martin on this board and I'm going to start off by putting them fur side in just for a couple of hours. And uh, in, in a couple of hours in my heated fur shed here, uh, I'm going to uh, start them like this. And in a couple of hours I'll flip them so that the, the fur is uh, on the outside. But if you look at this, I've got clean ears, I've got clean hide, I'll take a couple of pins, I'll actually pin this down to the board, these are stainless steel pins, you can use a thumbtack if that's what you have, pull this tight. I like to wrap. I like to wrap the legs down this way, pinning them kind of on the side. Makes that Martin hide look a little bit fuller. And like I said, in a, just a couple of hours, or maybe less, uh, once this hide starts to show that it's getting dry, just a little bit dry but not so dry I can't flip it. Uh, I will turn this inside out and I will have a Martin that's ready for sale. When I put that inside out, so the first side is out, I use a belly board, just a long thin piece of wood, and I'll slide that in all the way up to the head. And that will allow, when it's time to take this off the board, I'll slide this out and it helps get the Martin off a lot easier. So that's how you put up a Martin. Uh, when it's time to uh, put these up for sale, uh, I'll hopefully have uh, maybe 10 or 20 or 30 Martin and uh, all of them will be finished fur side out. And the fur grader will look at the Martin uh, from the perspective of what the final garment maker will want. And just to show, exactly what the intended look of this Martin is. You want to have to get a little bit more money. All these little tricks to get the most money out of your Martin are important. You want to have the ears and eyes even on the board. So you don't want to have it crooked. You want to have it pulled tight but not so tight that it stretches the hide. And this will be pinned down just like this with the same stainless steel pins I used initially. You can leave the legs tucked in. It's just fine to do that. 
or you can pull them out. <clears throat> when they get to the fur sale, a lot of times the fur auction houses will put these hides in a huge drum full of sawdust and spin it. And so if you're not careful and you leave those hanging out there, they can actually catch uh, inside that drum and rip the hide. So you'll end up losing value on the fur. Uh, so I like to leave them tucked in. I like to kind of get that on there, make it look like it's full, not too stretched. And this is uh, the way the belly of the Martin is going to look when it's done. And that is the ears. I just leave the ears wild, but the eyes are put on there nice and evenly. And the belly board is slid up all the way to the head. And I leave this to dry. And I'll leave it on the board as long as I possibly can. So there you have it. That's how you put up a Martin ready for sale.